Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Patterson. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how you can design your own modern and minimal website layout inside of Adobe XD. If you don't know what Adobe XD is, it's an app that you can use to design and prototype websites, apps, and even create presentations. We're not actually gonna be developing the app. What we're doing is we're designing the UI and the experience behind the website. And with these tips, I'm gonna be showing you with layout, using grids, and how to space things out correctly and group them so everything looks clean. You're gonna find out a lot of information about how your either portfolio or your current website or blog should be designed. We're gonna be working in a 1920 by 1080 document. That's just the standard size. And the first thing you wanna do is press this layout button. Now you'll instantly get this sort of weird looking brick column looking thing. And this is the layout. This is how we're going to be working out where our website should be laid out. By that, I mean it helps keep rhythm in the design all the way through. So as we're going through and laying things out, we'll be using this to guide us where things should be and where content should be placed. You can see on my left here, I've got a bunch of components. I've made these before just to make my life easier, but you can create these as well throughout your design to keep everything consistent. And I've also got over here behind this massive grid, I've got all my assets and my pictures that I wanna get into my website. So the first thing to know about the grid is we can change these over here by using a 12, 16, but that's just the standard. We can change that if we so desire. But what we're gonna do only is change the color opacity down a bit. I'm actually gonna change the color to pink because my main color is going to be blue. So now that we're here, go ahead, select your whole artboard by clicking this button at the top and press make default. And that means that when you create a new artboard now, everything is going to be looking the same. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna choose a color. Now the baseline color of your website should be heavily involved to your brand. Now we're working on Mindscape. If you don't know what Mindscape is, it's an app that we got designers to design over at Fiverr and develop, and it's a free app. So I thought I wanted to create a landing page online to give more of a marketing executive look to this brand. So the first thing I'm gonna do is we're going to choose this color at the background, and that is the hex color 212642. You can still see my guides in there, and they're just there ever so slightly. The next thing we'll do is get a guide in at the top and bottom to know where top and bottom should be. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the 100 one. By holding shift, it'll bring me down the Y axis by 100. And then over here, it's gonna be exactly where my first grid is. So everything, all my content is gonna be involved in this area from the top, bottom, left and right. First thing I'd like to do is go ahead and bring my logo in. I've got my logo in the component section over here at the right size. But the main thing is I'm gonna drag it so it's round about here in our work. So I want the actual word Mindscape to fit on top of this line on this guide and be exactly where this grid line is here. The icon is just going to stay where it is there and it's optically balanced to look correct. The next thing I want to do is create a starry night background. Now this app is all to do with meditation and it's about being able to mix your sound. So I want to get it to look night timey where people will do most of the meditations to get to sleep. So I've got this image from Unsplash. I'm just going to drag it in and it is quite large. I've changed the opacity to 32 just to make it as large as it needs to be. Once it's there, select it and press Command or Control L and that will lock it. So now whenever we're just selecting anything on here, it's not gonna have any issues. So now we need to put in some text. Now text needs to be grouped correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and just write down with the text tool, relax, unwind, tonight. Now I've got the title here to be relax and unwind tonight. And this is all created by my character styles here on the left. I've already created this character style list, so I know what assets I'm going to be using. That's something that you'll get used to when you're doing web layouts. The next thing I want underneath this is some more text. Now we don't know exactly what text we wanna put in. So when you're designing like the framework of a website, you can literally just drag out. Um, look, we're using the actual guidelines here to do this. So we're actually creating a text box with these guidelines. We're gonna choose to do lorem ipsum. I'm gonna write some words in here first. And because I don't know what I wanna write in there yet, but I know that text will be in there, I'm going to use a plugin. So we're gonna go down to the plugin area and go to this free one called lorem ipsum. You can download these plugins from the plugin part at the top. And then I'm gonna go ahead, press 
place for free holding text and boom we've got our text right there now we need to just move this up ever so slightly we can see automatically if i get rid of the actual layout part and the guides that it's starting to take shape everything is gridded together this is gridded with the logo up at the top and it looks nice and centered in the screen and it's spaced and grouped correctly all we're trying to do here is create a good grouping now i've got some images here on the right that i want to use so i'm going to go ahead and copy this over here and bring this image to about i'll say here and this image here looks pretty good the reason why i've chosen this one is it's an iphone app i want to get people to see it straight away and i want it to be clean now this image was created in a mock-up design which i'll link down below now it's important to make sure the image matches nicely with the background otherwise it's not going to be very nice and again we want this actual framework bit to be inside of the actual website here so we want it to be relatively on this axis of the thirds i'm going to go ahead and press command l to lock that so i don't mess around with it anymore and the next thing i want to do is create a button so what i'm going to do is create a square so i'm going to press it r and from this grid box here i'm going to create a line like so now that i've got that i want to get rid of my layout because it's starting to annoy me when i'm creating buttons and we're going to just come in ever so slightly a little bit this way and i'm going to get rid of the border i'm going to make sure the color is at pure white and we're going to go to this little button here and press four and that will just round the corners ever so slightly not too much but just give it that nice roundness inside of here i'm just going to put press the text tool and press download and i'm going to use my character style i'm using monster Rat here as a nice download link to make sure that people when they're seeing it see the branding and just make it a bit bolder but it's the opposite of that so people know that this is a button so go ahead group this by selecting both of them and press command and g now we're going to turn on our layers back on and we're going to go press command and semicolon to bring our guides up because we need a navigation panel up at the top so what i'm going to do is I'm going to just select this title text and i'm going to bring it down ever so slightly and we're going to write the word home and this is going to be my navigation bar and i don't really care at the minute how it looks but i want to go ahead probably make this semi bold and increase it to 25. again i'm making sure the baseline or the bounding box is hitting the guide here but is also in the middle of that logo i'm going to press alt and shift and we're going to move it as you can see there 40 or so pixels to the right i'm going to write about and i'm going to do the same 40 pixels but it should just snap for you download and repeat 40 login now what we can do here is just leave that if we like we can just keep that all that and nicely but we might need to change this in the future so what do we do we need to select all of these we can group them by pressing command g and we can actually do a stacking order so we can press this button to stack this now means that i can move each one of these around like so and it will keep in a stack don't forget we're going to be justifying the nav bar at the top to the right hand side to match over here so it's symmetrical so bring that log in all the way in until it reaches that line there on that grid now that we've got them i want to go ahead and create some more spacing here and we can play around to see where we want the download button to be when we're up here at the top i'm going to add this little thing down here which is a little arrow that i got in from illustrator what this arrow does is it lets people know that we're going to be scrolling okay the next part of this is to create another artboard which i just did very easily there bring it to the bottom and this is what i like to do bring this artboard to the bottom select the first artboard and we're going to drag through the transformation here down to the bottom of this artboard and this is doubling the length of our first artboard so we don't have to create different ones we can just create a scrollable experience take the artboard that we moved there and drag that back up just over there we don't need it now and as you can see we've just brought all this information or this page down to make it easier we've noticed there's a problem with this so we just move it down a bit increase the size so the arm comes out i'm going to drag in this one over here this actual picture which is the opposite hand which i like to do this is a really neat way of making sure that people can see the app in different areas looking really nice and clean all we need to do now is repeat the same process but with information we're going to be grouping these together so we can go ahead and highlight this press alt and drag i'm going to drag it to about here 
And we want it to be on this guideline here so we've got enough space. So we've got a, exactly one column away. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press choose how you relax. And we're going to increase the size of this to come out ever so slightly more and bring it down a little bit. We can also increase the amount of placeholder text quite easily by just doing this again. So now it looks like we've got information in here. Now let's go ahead and press command and enter and we can head into the prototype look in here. Now in the next few videos that I do on Adobe XD, I'm going to be showing you how I do a few things. First of all, I'm going to be showing you how you can create this effect. So when you hover over the actual picture, it scales up really gently. And we're also going to be showing you how to like create links around the place. Now, if we want to create this as a real prototype, so we know that we can scroll down, it is super simple. All we need to do is press Alt 2, which will bring us to the prototype tab. And what we can do now is we can press on the about, double click, so about is highlighted with this blue dot. We're going to go ahead and wireframe this down or bring the wire down to choose how to relax. Now, what this is saying in XD is when you click that, it's going to scroll down. So instead of actually developing an app, we're just designing a prototype. So when I've done that, it says you need to go and scroll down to here, as you can see from the right. Now we're going to choose an ease in, ease out scroll. And we're going to do about 0.6 and we can change this again. And we want the buffer to be up here, exactly where this line is where we had our first artboard. Now, if I go ahead and press command enter, here we are prototyping it. If we go to about, you'll see we can click it and it lets us come down a bit, maybe a bit too fast. So we'll increase that to one second, prototype it again, press about and we get a really nice scrolling effect. We can even do this with this little button down here. We can get it so it chooses to relax and it's got the same function there. So when we go ahead and press this button, it will do the exact same function and it will scroll down really gently to the bottom. Another little trick to make it look like a real prototype website is on the about section, if we go to the design, so go back to design, double click on about, and we're going to go ahead and press make component. What this allows us to do is create a separate component on a hover state. And when we do that, it means that we can change what it looks like when you've hovered over it. So what I'm gonna do is make sure on the hovered state, the fill is going to be dramatically lowered to a nice gray. And this gives us good feedback that we can click on something. So now if I switch between default and hovered state, you can see it works. When we go to prototype mode, you'll see we've got this little hover thing going on here. And we can press auto animate, ease in, ease out, which gives us a nice animation. And we can do this in 0.3 seconds. Go ahead and preview your prototype. Now, when we hover over about, it goes dark and it also becomes a button. For any of you watching this for the first time and thinking, why is he doing XD design videos? Well, it's because I love experience design. It's something that is becoming ever more apparent in my work. As soon as we started working as an agency, we've been seeing more and more companies that we're doing visual brands for, ask for experience designs and prototypes of their branding, whether that's an app or a website. I'm going to be creating more videos around this. So if you've got any ideas or content suggestions, please leave a comment down below. And as always, remember to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything, turning on the notification bell. That way I can buzz in your pocket, not weirdly, every time I upload a new video. Thanks for watching guys. See you in the next one. Goodbye.